Welcome to Unit 7.2, Causes of the Great War, otherwise known as World War I. There are several supplementary videos that are required for this particular lesson, so please visit my website below so you can pick those up and grab the key concepts worksheet that correlates with this uh, video lesson. So without further ado, let's get started. Our learning goal for today is to explain the causes and consequences of World War I. We only have one key concept. The causes of World War I included imperialist expansion and competition for resources. In addition, territorial and regional conflicts combined with a flawed alliance system and intense nationalism to escalate the tensions into global conflict. June 28, 1914, Sarajevo. In the annexed nation of Bosnia-Herzegovina on the edge of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Armed with bombs and pistols supplied by Serbian military intelligence, seven conspirators positioned themselves at intervals along the car route of the visiting Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austrian throne. The first to strike lobs a hand grenade towards Franz Ferdinand's open touring car, but the grenade is an old one with a 10 second fuse. It bounces off the limo and into the road where it explodes under the next vehicle in the motorcade. Although several officers in that car are hurt, Franz Ferdinand remains uninjured. To avoid capture, the conspirator draws a vial of cyanide and swallows it down, but it is expired and gives him a nasty chemical burn instead. He then throws himself off a bridge into a nearby river, but the water is only a few inches deep. His legs are broken. He is beaten by onlookers and arrested. The bombing throws the rest of the Archduke's plans into disarray. The motorcade is abandoned. Franz Ferdinand is hurried off to the town hall where he is due to meet with state officials. The remaining assassins disperse, their opportunity apparently gone. One of them, Gavrilo Princip, walks down Franz Joseph Street. At that very moment, Franz Ferdinand is leaving the town hall to visit the men hospitalized from the grenade blast. His chauffeur, a stranger to Sarajevo, gets lost. He swings onto Franz Joseph Street, then drifts to a stop. Princip looks up to find his target sitting just a few feet away. He pulls his gun. Two shots ring out, the first killing Franz Ferdinand's wife, Sophie. The second hits the air in the neck, severing his jugular vein. The Archduke slumps back, mortally wounded. His security team jumps on Princip and hustles him away. The moment of the assassination is often described as the spark that triggered the powder keg of World War I. There were many other mitigating factors that made this regional conflict spiral into our first truly global war, not just the death of a Habsburg royal in Eastern Europe. World War I was the bloodiest war that had ever occurred in history, with over 20 million casualties. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the exact definition of casualty, it does not mean just military personnel who perished in the conflict. War-related injuries of soldiers and civilians form the basis of casualty statistics, which is why World War I and World War II will have such high numbers. It will bring an end to the three nations we discussed in 7.1, Tsarist Russia, the Ottoman Empire, and the Qing Dynasty, plus Austria-Hungary. It will also create nine new European nations. Lastly, the economic and to a large extent socio-cultural impact of the Great War will start unraveling the hegemony of European colonizers and trigger an era of rebellion and increasing nationalism around the world. So let's revisit our key concepts. The immediate cause of World War I was the assassination of the Archduke Franz Ferdinand by Gavrilo Princip, member of the Black Hand terrorist group that wanted to see the recently annexed Bosnia and Herzegovina reunited with other ethnic Serbs in Serbia. At 18, Gavrilo Princip was too young to be executed, so he received a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison, dying of tuberculosis at age 23 after losing an arm. For the record, and contrary to urban legend, Princip was not eating a sandwich when the Archduke's car rolled past. At worst, the assassination of Franz Ferdinand should have led to a regional war in the Balkans. However, this was not the case. Austria demanded the Serbian government would have to accept an Austro-Hungarian inquiry into the assassination, effectively eliminating the Serbian court system. Serbia was also to suppress all anti-Austrian propaganda and to take steps to root out and eliminate all terrorist organizations such as the Black Hand from within its borders. This was an extreme response and Austria was hoping for the answer that it received. When Serbia said no, Austria declared war and Russia moved to help its ally, Serbia. This would then force Germany to get involved protecting its ally, Austria-Hungary, and it issued a firm stay out of this to Russia and France. 
Russia did not back down, so Germany declared war on Russia, which triggered France's involvement, which got Belgium invaded, and then everything civilized fell apart. How did all of this happen? Why did it escalate, and why did it escalate so quickly? Because this conflict had been brewing for years. The older and underlying reasons for the tension in Europe stem from the economic practices and jealousies of nations seeking to be international powerhouses. For the next few slides, we are going to take a closer look at these reasons. Militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism. These four reasons create an acronym, MAIN. Militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism. Use it to help you remember. Militarism is essentially aggressive military preparedness. These, this means that a nation could go to war at any moment with relative confidence, and this is a little nerve-wracking for nations along their borders. The Industrial Revolution allowed nations like Britain to amass a large arsenal of weapons and use those weapons to conquer lands and enlarge its army, which could then repeat the process. On its fast track to industrial superiority, Germany was anxious to invest in hopes of limiting Britain's veritable monopoly on maritime trade. This would compel them to invest in U-boats or submarines, while Britain preferred the dreadnought, the largest and most expensive class of ships in the industrialized era. This clearly sent a message to other European nations. As the chain reaction of escalations was made clear earlier, alliances played a heavy role in how World War I spread. These alliances protected smaller nations from more powerful ones, but uh, they also pitted nations with industrial, colonial, and military jealousies against others. The most important alliances in World War I grew rapidly, so we tend to gloss over their early stages and names, focusing on the larger alliance systems of the Central Powers, which were Germany, Italy, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, and the Allies, Russia, France, Britain, and eventually the United States. This can be a little complicated because an earlier name for the Central Powers was the Triple Alliance, while the earlier name for the Allies was the Triple Entente. For the ease of this lesson, let's just call them the Central Powers and the Allies. Not all nations participated in World War I. Uh, Spain was having issues with civil war. Switzerland preferred to just manage everyone's banking systems. And Belgium, well, Belgium was actually about to change its mind regarding neutrality, but we'll get into that in chapter 7.3. Uh, as you can see, there are many more members to each side of the conflict than just the nations previously mentioned. However, we are only focusing on the most powerful ones, which reminds me, uh, when we are referring to Russia, it has not yet gone through its Russian Revolution. Imperialism played a heavy role in European jealousies. The acquisition of new lands and resources in Africa and Asia helped to increase corporate profits, and Germany was determined to give Britain a run for its money. This political cartoon is the perfect example of the rivalries from imperialism. As you can see, all the nations are circling around China, hoping to get a piece of the kill. And when we take a good look at all of the lands controlled by European powers, it becomes clear that most of the world is putting Europe against itself. Um, I want to point out that Siberia is still considered part of the Russian Empire because it had been recently conquered, but Africa is absolutely going to be the biggest area of conflict overall. The assassination of the Archduke was in response to growing Serbian nationalism, but the Balkan region was not the only area where nationalism was on the rise. The Napoleonic Wars triggered the spread of European nationalism in the early 19th century, and the cascading effect of these wars would result in unifying countries like Germany and Italy, while other empires like the Austrian Habsburgs and the Ottomans would increasingly struggle to maintain control of populations seeking self-determination or the right to self-rule. The spark that triggered the Great War was Balkan nationalism. 
As the Ottoman Empire was rapidly losing that Balkan region, these newly formed states sought greater autonomy from more powerful European nations. Uh, Slavic people in Bosnia and Herzegovina desired independence from Austria-Hungary and hoped that the death of Franz Ferdinand would be the catalyst that they sought. Russia promoted Pan-Slavism in the Balkans to weaken its powerful neighbor, Austria-Hungary, and Germany was eager to help suppress ethnic nationalism in its ally because Germany itself had recently struggled to overcome its own diverse Volksgeist. This takes us back to the chain reaction of World War I. It is not just the assassination, but the accumulation of militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism that caused this chain of events to happen so fast. As we wrap up the lesson for 7.2, the causes of World War I, these are some great learning questions to ensure that you do understand. Can you explain and discuss the key causes behind the drift toward European war in the early 20th century? And can you explain key alliance systems? If so, great job. If not, go back and take another look. This officially wraps up our lesson on 7.2. Don't forget to go to my website to look at the supplemental, the required supplemental videos that go along with this lesson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in class.